Hello there everybody and welcome back to another action-packed episode of An Ecologist Plays Avatar Frontiers of Pandora where we are running against the clock here to well, do a few things. We're hopefully going to save our research friends, our RDA friends, while also at the same time getting rid of a few of the... Oh, well, also running away from Titanotheus. Hopefully they're not semi-aquatic. No, they are completely terrestrial it seems. But at the same time, we're also trying to get rid of some RDA which are attacking our research friends. Oh, I've just been knocked off by the lightning. Oops, Daisy. You really don't want to be out here during a thunderstorm. Yet here we are. All right, we have a new weapon, which is the staff sling. The idea is that it gives you, well, basically longer arms to throw further. Uh, so brilliant weapon to have and we are going to be using it hopefully to uh, get rid of some of the amp suits some of the mechs that are going to come our way i'm just going to find some high ground right over here because as we've learned from obi-wan uh, it's over once you have the high ground i assume those markers are where the rda are going to land so let's just give them a nasty surprise right over there yep that was indeed the case he 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 a little bit of light unaliving happening here now. Hello there. Goodbye there. Oh, hello. Are you behind me? Hello. Goodbye. A few minutes later. Okay. To the east. We need to get some medical kits. Or a medical kit. There we go. There should be a building right over there. We're going to do something stupid. We're going to run up and slide into them. Because we can. Let's see, come on, come on, line up and boink, off they go, and punch you. That was fun. Alma, I found the supplies. And we've got our first RDA weapon. Please, hurry. Aha, here comes an Ikran, ridden by another Navi. Oh, nice. Okay, three amps. We've got three minutes and 46 seconds to do this. Let's see what we can manage to do. High ground it is. Okay, if they can just stand together, that'll be great. I think they are together and... There we go, too. And there we go, that one is dead. Alright, so that Navi that was fighting on the Ikran's back... That was Etua from the Aranahe clan, and we are going to go and see her, well, probably in the next episode, because that is going to lead us all the way to Home Tree, which I believe is right over here. So, quite a distance to get there. And, as you can see at the top there, we are not the correct level. That is basically level 3 gear that you need. Instead of leveling up with XP, you've, your gear amounts to a certain... A level for you your combat strength and we are currently combat strength 2 whereas that quest the Aranahe clan quest is a combat score 3 so we need to upgrade our gear in order to go and do that quest or in order to have a good chance of success with that quest but for now we are back at the resistance headquarters uh, we're speaking to Solik here to get Solik's lightning longbow the recipe to craft it all right so right over there on the logs, we have tiny, tiny, tiny little birds. can barely see them, but those are the Tetrapteron. There we go, Tetrapteron, meaning four wing. And it says, it's a small flamingo-like creature with four wings flying in small flocks. So there's one there, there's another one to its left there. I don't see any more. But if we go to the Hunter's Guide and we go to Tetrapteron, you can see what it looks like. It's quite small. Now, it has got the four wings and it's got these weird extensions in the front here as well, which are not part of its actual uh, wings. These are little extra appendages, long tail and a very, very weird mouth with, it seems, quite a few teeth in there as well. These two extra appendages here do appear to be what they call the twin tail, which is used to as it lands there and as it is flying to balance uh, overall. So you can probably shift a little bit more to the left and right and up and down in order to actually make sure that it's well balanced so it doesn't fall over when it comes to land or when it takes off. 
Now, not covered in feathers, uh, which is very different from our earthen birds, of course. And initially, it does look kind of like a bird until you notice that, well, there are no feathers. It's got four wings. It's got these weird streamers on the side here. Many birds on Earth do, of course, have things like these little streamers here, the little appendages to the wings in many cases. Things like the pennant wing nightjar, for example, have got the males at least have these long streamers, long feathers on their wings, which they will use in courtship flights. Uh, to draw the attention of a female but in this case it's not used for that it is actually used for balance it says they're very very social birds here very long legs very long necks uh, typical like flamingos and a little bit smaller i think than flamingos wingspan of around about a meter and the long legs here will help them to wade through the water now it does say that there are two types of tetrapteron we've got the aquatic species and you've got arboreal or ones that live up in trees I think these are all the aquatic species. There we go, taking off. Just flying past. Using their wings, it seems in pairs. The front set of wings and the hind set of wings alternating as they are flying. Now, long legs will mean that they can probably wade in the water here and in quite deep water at that. So it's an adaptation to stay above the water level as they actually look and hunt for food in the shallowish water. Most likely just rested on the root here, uh, not actively feeding, just kind of roosting at the moment. Now looking at the dapper fit here, definitely drawing inspiration from Earth's aloes in many, many ways. Uh, first of all, we've got kind of this weird skirt going along here. It's in this case made up, it seems, of fibrous roots uh, growing around the main stem. In South Africa, there's an aloe species, aloe ferox, the bitter aloe, and all aloes are bitter but the bitter aloe is like extra bitter uh, trust me on that one uh, but that one will have old leaf bases kind of forming a protective skirt around the stem which is to protect it against fire now we are in a rainforest here so it's highly unlikely that that helps with that it may be a form of defense against things trying to eat it but it does seem to have a protective network of roots growing along it now of course the leaves here fleshy or succulent you can see that here and that of course stores water and it seems that most likely this area although it is a tropical area it will have the monsoon season and it will have the dry season and during the dry season there may not be any rain falling at all and succulent species like the dapperfit may be well equipped to survive those harsher times now we're back where we started earlier and there are some hammerhead titanotheres right over there way too big a level for us to take out but oh my word they are such gorgeous animals i mean look at this beautiful creature now you can kind of see it being obviously based on something like a rhino or uh, one of those other rhino like extinct creatures and it's got a kind of like a black rhino's beak over here or well, hooked lip indicating that it most likely is a browser rather than a grazer. In the rhino world, the black rhino, also known as the hook-lipped rhino for obvious reasons, has a hooked lip, whereas the white rhino in the African savanna has a broad lip because it grazes on grass and it uses its wide lip to just kind of take up a whole bunch of grasses all at the same time. But having a hooked lip means that you have more control over what you actually take in. You can wiggle amongst the branches to get to the leaves that are there. So this is most likely a browser of sorts. Now it's about twice the size of an African elephant, which is massive. Um, so yeah, that is something very, very interesting to consider that even though it doesn't appear to be twice the size of an African elephant to us, that's because we are almost twice the size of humans. So yeah, these guys are massive in size. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, or in this case, the hammer on the front of this thing's head. So it seems that it's made out of cartilage when the animals are young and allows it to actually bend as they force their way through vegetation because they're young, they're inexperienced, don't know quite how to walk about with this massive thing in the front. So young ones will have this hammer made out of cartilage and then as they get older and mature it ossifies and turns into bone. So in the case of an adult here this is a solid bone structure. And of course they use it to defend against predators to attack rivals and to also just attract a mate as well so males will use this to display that along with the 
crest at the top of its head will be used to display for females and to intimidate predators. And if this six-legged, massive, twice the size of an African elephant creature comes charging at you, you better hope that there's a big boulder between you and it because it will charge through vegetation to get to you. It's immense size coupled with the fact that it is very aggressive and the fact that it has horrible eyesight despite having two sets of eyes here. They have very, very poor eyesight. They will charge at you, but they won't necessarily know what they are charging at. Very similar to rhinos, which also have horrible eyesight. But very, very well armored bony plates on the shoulders here, protecting them against things like the Leonopteryx, which is that big ikran that Jake Sully rode in the first movie, the orangish, yellowish, flamish colored one. Uh, so that, yeah, protects it against that. And things like the Thanator as well, which we most likely will encounter at some point as well. So with them being so dangerous and so massive, we really should be staying away from them. But I'm going to go see what happens if we do go closer? Do they kill us? Do they charge at us and then just stop? So do they do a mock charge? Or do they just run away? Because elephants and things like that will very often do what we call a mock charge. They charge at you and then they stop. Hello there. So we've got an adult there. Another adult here. And another adult. Okay, so three adults over here. Kind of walking around in the swampy areas, not swimming per se, it seems, because they also didn't swim after us at the start of our episode. Look, notice the crests going erect. They have noticed something and they've noticed that I'm here. Hello there. Uh, they are upset with me, intimidating me. And there we go, really trying to get me to go away and most likely will be charging at me in a moment. And here they go. I'm most likely going to die, but let's see, are you mock charging? No, that is a solid charge, okay. For science, everyone, stay away from them. There's a threat display using its bulk to try and get rid of us. Okay. Note to self, they don't mock charge. They do, however, it seems, if you get far enough from them, they do go back to where they were. Awesome, the fact that they do raise their crest as an intimidation strategy. And now that we are away from them, they don't see us. Obviously, at the moment, they also don't smell us. So they're just going about their business, eating lowish growing plants. Uh, we're using their little hooked lips. Seems, well, maybe drinking water that run. I was thinking maybe they're feeding on aquatic plants. Maybe. That one also is doing the same. So maybe they're actually feeding on aquatic plants along with low-growing shrubs that they can find. Oh, wow. Just wow. There's one lying down. Now, I'm not sure whether it's just lying down or doing a bit of mud wallowing. Large animals like... Well, elephants love getting mud on them, uh, rhinos, buffalo, all those mega herbivores very often will roll around in mud as well. I could spend all day just looking at the animals in this game. It is so awesome. But here, I think this is a good spot to end today's episode. So thank you very much everyone for joining me on our little adventure as we have now also come to look at the Hammerhead Titanotheus. As we just make a tactical retreat over here. Here we go, watching its threat display. I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead, and I'll see you again Friday. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider doing that to help the channel to grow, and of course be notified when new videos like this one comes out. And until next one everybody, stay safe. I'll see you all soon. Bye!